Hello, I'm David Watson with CAPS, manufacturer of the Hurt 60 ton air cooled water chiller with integrated pump package. This video will go through the setup, startup, and operation of the Hurt 60 ton air cooled chiller. The next step in the setup of the 60 ton air cooled chiller is to verify what the electrical requirements are that are listed on the CAPS data tag. This particular machine requires 157 amps of 480 volt power and up to a 175 amp breaker. To transport the 60 ton air cooled chiller, you have two options. The integrated forklift slots here and here, or an overhead lifting certified cage. You can do single point lifting off the top. The center of gravity is clearly marked here. And always bear in mind that you need to reference the weight tag on the side here to ensure you have the proper size forklift or proper size crane. Next step in our setup is to connect the main high voltage 480 volt cam lock cables. We're going to do that by removing the protective cam lock caps from L1, 2, and 3 in the ground. Remember to always hook up the ground first. Now we've got all three legs hooked up. We're going to energize the unit off the main power and determine whether or not our phase is correct. Okay, we're going to energize the power now and verify that we have power and verify if the phase is correct. Go ahead, pull it. Okay, our power light came on and our phase incorrect light is on. This indicates that two of our primary phases are backwards. So we're going to lock and tag out the main power feed source. We're going to reverse two of the cam locks to get the phase correct. Please note, never change the cam lock power or phasing with the cables energized. Okay, we reversed two of the phases now. We're going to energize the main power. Now our power light is on and our phase incorrect light is off. At this time, I want to pay attention to this tag that says, Unit is equipped with lockout timer. 480 volt power should be applied at least one hour before starting in order to warm the compressor oil up in each of the compressors. To do so, you're going to turn the system switch on simply, and that will start the warming process of the compressors. Please note that if you turn the switch off or disconnect main high voltage power, that does reset the timer. This is a protection built into our machine in order to ensure the compressors are warmed up and no liquid refrigerants present when it starts up. 60 ton air cooled chiller has an integrated pump in it. So our next step is going to be to hook up the supply line and the return line. Please note here that the female cam lock is the inlet to our pump. And then we're going to connect the male into it. There we go. Now we're going to take the female line here and connect it to the male. This is the outlet of our chiller. You're going to want to make sure that the, the, the uh, clips are locked down and if the hose is supported, not going to bind. Okay, our next step is going to be to hook up our fill line so we can fill the chiller with water. Please note down here at the bottom that this is our fill line, which is the one that's equipped with a check valve. The T that comes off the piping, this is the drain valve. This valve is used to fill the system. This valve is used to drain the system. While we're here, also, you note that this is the differential pressure switch or flow switch. This verifies that we actually have flow across our chiller barrel in order to, ver to ensure the machine is protected properly. Additionally, we've got temperature and gauges here for part of the instrumentation for the technician to reference during the operation. And then finally, since this is our inlet line, we've got an inline strainer here that'll, be, that'll protect the machine from any debris with a blowdown valve here that can blow down any trash that might get in the system. Now that we've connected our supply and our and return water lines to the tiller, we have to determine if the project requires the use of our onboard pump, then we have to position the valve. If we're not going to use our onboard pump, then we have a built-in bypass. Very simple process. If we're going to use our pump, then we're going to open up the inlet valve to our pump here. 
the line with the line here, we're going to leave the bypass closed. If we're going to use the customer's pump, we're going to close the valve to the pump, and we're going to open the bypass up. That allows water to come through and be flowing through the chiller from the customer's pump. If we use our pump, we're going to simply open it up, and our pump will draw the water in and push it through the chiller. Okay, remember with a water-cooled chiller, you have to have water completely full in all the pipes, all of the components, and the barrel. You don't want to have any air in there. So we've charged the system with the potable water up to about 30 PSI. It can be 40, but 30 to 40 PSI is a good standing pressure. We have nothing running, and we want to go to all of the high points to bleed any air off. Remember, if there's any air in the system, it's going to cause the flow switch to trip or potentially cause the machine to go out on a safety alarm. The first place to start on all the machines is at the pump volute right here. There's an air bleeder here, and I open it up, and you can see that there's air coming out. So as the air comes out, water is going to continue to fill back in into this. This is the very first part we want to open up. Now we're starting to get it let out, and what you want to do is you want to continue to let it bleed out until you get a nice stream of water or all the air is out, that's about where we're at there. Then the next thing you want to look for is we have clearly marked a high, a high point bleed. You can open up this valve, you can hear the air coming out of it. Wherever there's air at, you're going you're gonna to get trapped up in there, you've got to push it out and get the water out. The water is free flowing now, so at this point we've got all the air out of the chiller barrel, and we've got all the air out of the pump balloon. Now we're ready to start circulating. Now we've got our system filled with fluid. Its standing pressure is about 40 PSI. We've bled all the air from all the high points, whether that be the air handler, top of the customer's manifold, the chiller, the pump, all the air that we can get out of the systems out. We turn the pump on. You're going to turn on the main breaker here and simply turn the pump switch on. Now we've got our pump circulating through the system. We've done this several times to circulate the water to move the air around. Please note, you can never bleed the air out of the system with the pump running. You'll need to turn the pump off, let the water settle, all the air will rise to the top, then you can go back to your high point bleeds and bleed the air out. If you don't get the air out of the system, the flow, the flow switch will not make or the chiller will not operate properly and go out on false alarms. Okay, to recap the 60-ton chiller setup, we set the unit properly on a level, firm surface. We hook up the high voltage power and then verify that it's spaced correctly. We set, hook up our plumbing on our inlet outlet of our hose. We filled the system with water. We've bled all the air out of it. We've had our circulation pump running through our air handlers, and now we're ready to start the chiller up. At this point, I don't need my high voltage gloves anymore because we're going to go into the controls and the low voltage side next. This is the main chiller processor control panel. We're going to review over what each of the buttons are as it's very simple to operate. You can push any button on here and it's not going to foul anything up. So always remember to push the status button. The status button here will tell you what exactly is going on with the chiller. And this one simply says unit off on shutdown system switch, which is right here. It's in off position. The operator data is just that, it's data. It tells you what the chiller is doing, refrigerant pressure, temperatures, etc. Print button is if you hook a printer up, you can produce a report. History, anytime there's a fault or an alarm, it's logged in the history bu button. Set points is exactly what it says. We have to set the water temperature and set points, and that's where it's done here. Schedule advanced day, think of that as an on-off time clock, much like a thermostat at your home. Program button is in integrated programming that we set up in, in, the, in the factory. Options allows you to turn the systems on, off, language, or different types of modes. And then the clock button is just simply for setting the time and date in the chiller, which comes pre-programmed from GAPS. So to get started, the first thing we want to do is go into the, set, the, the options button, push it one time, and the enter or advanced button allows you to do uh, either enter a value or advance to the next menu. First thing that comes up is display language, which is English. That's fine. We'll advance. The next one is probably the most important menu selection. It says system 
uh, one uh, switch off and system two switch off. What we want to do is change that value by just simply moving the arrows up and down so we can turn system one on and two off, two on and, and one off, or push it again. We want to turn both systems on. Or you can push it again, turn both systems off. It's a software way of turning the compressors on and off. Typically, we'll shut the machines down by turning both system switches off. Now that we're done, we push the enter button, and that burns it in. The chiller is set up for, uh, for leaving uh, chilled water operation, which allows temperatures down to 40 degrees without the introduction of glycol. So I'm now I'm finished with that. I'm going to push my status switch, and it's still shut down on switch here. The next thing that I've got to do is just put a set point in, and it'll default to the last set point on the last project or when the machine was ran last. This particular chiller is set at 44 degrees. I want to lower this one uh, down to 42 degrees, so I just simply run the arrows down to 42, and then I push enter, and then I go back to my status button. So we've, we've got the system switches on. We've set our set point. At this point, we want the machine to come on and start making cold water, which is what we're uh, in purpose of the machine. Simply just got to turn the switch to on here, and we've got the switch, the, uh, the timer timing out. Okay, the next thing to do is just simply turn the switch on. Now the compressor is started. And notice that it says system one, compressor running one, system two is any recycle timer. That's all normal. As a chiller, we'll always start with the least number of compressors and start staging up. At this point, you can push the operator data here button. And you'll notice you'll see the leaving chilled liquid temperature and the return chilled liquid temperature. It's at 77 uh, leaving and at 78 coming back. So as the machine sees that set point at 42 and the water temperature at 78, it's going to continue to turn compressors on until it reaches its set point. Then at that time, it'll turn the compressors off and stage accordingly.